Sonic Eraser. No, not this type of eraser. It's a video game that was available for the Mega Drive. Hang on a tick. I don't remember owning that game for the Mega Drive or Genesis. You're telling lies, Red Up Sonic. Slow down, people. Before you jump down my throat, let me prove to you that this is indeed true, and to us why Sonic Eraser is probably the best Sonic game of all time. Okay, that last part was a bit. Travelling back to 1990, Sega released a hardware add-on called the Mega Modem, which was exclusively available in Japan. You attached the device to the back of your console to gain the ability to connect to the internet, but you also needed to sign up to their subscription service, dubbed as the Sega MegaNet, for a small monthly fee. Only then were you able to battle online against other foes, albeit only with limited titles, and you would be able to download exclusive games. Just think of it as the PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live service back in the early 90s. Of course the Blue Hedgehog had to be part of the collection somewhere, and people were treated to this unique gem, Sonic Eraser. I could elaborate on the hardware specifics further, but let's just cut to the chase. The subscription service got discontinued in late 1992, but it was eventually returned in the form of an online service for your PC in 2004. In Japan only. It was then when Fugols, the owner of the Sonic Cult website, discovered Sonic Eraser when downloading a bunch of other content, and extracted it, only to find it was encrypted. The talented nemesis unscrambled it, the ROM went viral, here's my Sonic Eraser review, and here's the book that I used that my wife bought for me to jot down notes with. Opening the file with an emulator, or if you fancy, use a flashcard to play this for realsies, we're presented with an ancient book titled Sonic Eraser, with no music. The instructions are shown- Oh, can anyone here read this? Yes, this originally being a Japanese exclusive, the majority of the language is native, with a little English here and there. However, we're in luck, because someone who goes by the name of D hacked Sonic Eraser and translated all of the Japanese text into a language I can comprehend. After reading the guidance, we're then told to choose an option. But before I explain these possibilities, let's discuss what the overall game is about. It's a fairly simple puzzle game. In groups of four, coloured variated shapes descend from the top of the screen and slowly make their way to the bottom in a similar fashion to Tetris. Although unlike Tetris, where solidified chunks rotate from its centre point, the coloured pieces actually switch position with each other in an anti-clockwise direction. However, you can't rotate them clockwise. I have no idea why B and C make them go anti-clockwise and A simply does nothing. And I can't even start to think why they didn't implement that in, but eh, what are you going to do? Holding the down button will speed up your tiles to hit the ground faster. You also get these random question marks which hides the contents of the colours, and they don't get revealed until they settle on the ground or on top of other pieces. The idea of the game is to get two or more identical colour blocks in contact with each other horizontally or vertically to make them disintegrate, and no touching diagonally does not count. Any overhanging shapes will fall, so gravity is a thing here. You can create chains to rack up a score quicker, or to cause inconvenience to your opponent, but more on that in a minute. And that's practically it, and the aim is to keep your screen clear for as long as possible, because once you reach the top, you're out. If you're wondering what on earth this has to do with Sonic, well, we stood right there, isn't that enough for you? Obviously it's not, but unfortunately, it's pretty much the best you're gonna get. To keep you hooked, there are three modes you can play, and one of them has four sub-modes to decide on, but let's start with 1P versus CPU. And it's just that, you're fighting against the computer, which means Sonic has cloned himself with robotic parts and has turned his back against him. You're located on the left, and the AI is on the right. You get to choose how difficult you would like the computer to be on a scale from 0 to 9, with it being easy to hard respectively. However, it's not just a stamina race here, you do kind of battle it out in a lame kind of way. If you make a 3 or higher chain combo, then before your next set piece comes into fruition, your Sonic character physically gives the CPU Sonic a mighty punch in the stomach. Wow, abuse! Meaning you've left the AI all disorientated, and it starts to lose control of its current piece. As well as the coloured blocks going absolutely berserk. Just be aware, it can go both ways, and it's practically uncontainable when you're stunned like this. It wears off after a few seconds, but there does seem to be two further attacks, 
I didn't exactly count how many chains I needed, but there's an attack where Sonic rolls into his opponent, and a final attack of him rolling with invincibility! And what do these two do differently? Nothing really. I believe it makes the confusion effect last longer, but otherwise, the result feels identical. Annoyingly, if you or the CPU is about to attack while patiently waiting for the opposition's current step to come to an end, it doesn't matter if the enemy pulls off a massive combo, the first one ready to attack gets priority. I guess that's fair, they were first, but once or twice I've pulled a huge sequence and then the computer punishes me. As you may have guessed, the first one to reach the top of the screen loses, and then the winner gains eternal life and runs off, with the game presenting the credits. There's another mode called 1P vs 2P. Very little is different here. Instead of the CPU being east, your friend, if you have any who would willingly like to play this game, takes its place. Ironically, I've played 30 seconds of this game already. It's called Sonic Eraser, and I cannot erase this from memory. <laughs> so bad. You say that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> it's really, really bad. <laughs> the one player and two player option is a lot more interesting because it introduces four variating ways to endure the game. Let me just get it out there, despite the mode being named 1P and 2P, you do not have to have a second participant with you. The right hand side will just remain closed, but a competitor can join in at any time and it won't interrupt your progress in any way, so you're never in direct competition with each other. This is basically single player times two. Anyway, on with the four sub selections. Let's kick off with normal mode. If the name didn't give it away, this is practically the same as what you would do when you're up against the computer or your mate. Except this time, you're actually alone. It's a durability test to see how long you can last. After a while, the difficulty rises where blocks gradually increase its weight and falls faster. Luckily, even though it's uncommon and totally random, Sonic himself will make an appearance and give you a helping hand, destroying a huge chunk of blocks for you. You could think of this method as exercise mode from Pio Pio. The music starts to speed up every time you progress through a level, which made a pleasant change to my ears. However, what I didn't appreciate was that startling and sound effect that jumps out on you every time you advance a difficulty. Jesus Christ, that made me jump! Round mode is my favourite. There are these whirly object shapes that you need to remove within 3 minutes by shifting them next to each other so they connect and evaporate. Remove them all and you're on to the next stage. Each stage gets harder, yet this was definitely the most fun for me. It requires way more thinking power and some clever moves to accomplish each clearance. I got up to level 24 before calling it a day, but that just shows how engrossed I was with this style. The Sonic Retro Wiki states there are only 10 levels, which is clearly wrong. Can anyone inform me how many chapters there are in the comments section? As much as I enjoyed this mode, I do have two complaints nonetheless. When it becomes apparent that it's impossible to complete, the game just carries on. It doesn't end with a failed message or anything. Also, there's no restart option. To effectively start over, you need to quit the stage and then reload it. Neither cons are biggies, but it's worth mentioning. Then you have Doubt Mode, which is undoubtedly horrific. I don't get it. Some coloured shapes that touch the ground turn into white blocks, as if they're joking around with me. It really screws up with my plans to make chains, or even to connect colours modestly, and to say I was getting angry with it is an understatement. Do yourself a favour and skip this selection. Finally, there's Block Mode. This one is similar to normal mode, only this time, the shapes do not collapse once settled. However, when you make two coloured fragments contact one another, suddenly all the hanging clusters drop. That's a strange get out clause, but on the other hand, I suppose the game would be problematic and over too quickly if they hadn't implemented that special case. But either way, I didn't stay on this mode for too long. In my opinion, round mode is the king, with normal mode on its tail. The other two approaches just seem to be tuckered in at a last moment's notice by the developers, to give the illusion the game is bigger than it actually stands out to be. It's evident they went for quantity over quality here. I don't know, this title is as basic as it can get. The graphics are simplistic with minimalist design and I wouldn't call it attractive. 
huge clashing colors, low quality presentation, one single transition which is just a mediocre scroll, and the music is dreadful. Well, to be fair on the compositions, the melodies aren't half bad, and I have a soft spot for the 1P versus 2P route, but it's a choice of instruments that wrecks it for me. At the end of the day, this is just a cheap, no thrills brain teaser experience, and I would hardly call it a Sonic game. He stands there without blinking a lot, so don't ask him to take part in a staring contest anytime soon, yet he does move little as possible on the occasional period. Seriously, if you're itching for something more challenging, you could try Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Or if that's too energetic for your tastes, then Columns may be up your street. It's highly similar to Sonic Eraser, except the display is a ton better with the music being a lot more tolerable. But if it's a Sonic title you need to insert into your 16-bit console, then literally try any other Sonic game from the main series. Heck, even Sonic 3D and Spinball outrank this game. And I honestly believe, if it wasn't for Sonic making cameo entrances and having his name slapped across the cover, this game may have been left in the dust. That being said, I have to follow the tradition of playing the game again live in front of you guys after my reviews, so keep an eye out for Saturday's live stream. Seeing as Sonic Eraser will be pretty short in terms of game time, I will be adding more content to the show. The link to the live stream is in the description. If you would like to see behind the scene goodies and gain early access to videos and other perks, then become a sponsor of my channel today. Thanks to these fantastic people for their support and making this video possible. And not forgetting you viewers, I appreciate your time watching this footage. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button to see more reviews in the future. Also, just a quick message, I haven't forgotten about the Sonic Time Twisted review. There isn't a date scheduled for its release, but it is in progress. For now, you guys have a great evening, and I'll catch you real soon. Ciao!